Well, good morning, fellow gardeners, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Garden America. We are back. It is Brian Maine right here. John Bagnasco to my right. Tiger Palafox to my left. Getting ready for a, an interesting show today. We hope you had a good weekend, a fantastic Thanksgiving. Uh, all that to say, thank you for spending part of your Thanksgiving weekend with us here on Garden America. It's good to see you. Yes, reminding you that we do see you. John is here. Tiger is uh, here. If you read the newsletter, then you have uh, somewhat of an idea of what today's show is going to be about. Tiger, what is today's show going to be about before we get into all the other aspects of gardening? Before Tiger does that. Oh, thank you. Oh, John is here. Hello, John. <laughs> yeah, why is it always to the right of me, to the left of me? Why don't you use directions? Joker's to the right. Here I am, stuck in the yeah, middle. Yeah, what about like north of me, south of me, east of me, west of me? Because I'm not sure directional-wise in this studio, you would be kind of north, I think. Tiger a bit south. All right. So I can just call you North and South the rest of the show? Well, now I at least know where I am. <laughs> oh, I see my closed captioning is on again, which I never turn on, but it likes to uh, automatically turn on on Facebook. <laughs> so, it, yeah, if you can't hear us, that, that's a great option on Facebook. You can turn on the CC closed captioning. Can, can and actually read, hear us? You can read uh, what's going on. Oh. This could <laughs> be an interesting show today. Because I don't have audio coming through my phone yet. And, you don't. But I do see audio going through... My app. Through the app. Yeah. Well, you know what? Do you I, have audio, I, I think if people couldn't hear us right now, they would say something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right away. <laughs> right away. Sometimes before the show, we, we're not even on yet. Hey, I can't hear you. Uh, okay. Do you have San a nice Fern Thanksgiving? Hey, good morning from San Fernando Valley. Hi, Tiger from uh, Debbie. Yes, had a great Thanksgiving, a low-key Thanksgiving. As I mentioned to you before this show, the show, uh, the wind played havoc blowing everything one way. Oh, my gosh. And then immediately blowing the other way. Huge so, gusts, too. So you had it, too, it was, then, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had trees blowing over. It, uh, But like I told you, when you have Santa Ana's or strong winds like that, it's best just to leave everything laying down. All sounds and looks good. So we're good to go. Tiger, just double-check that. A lot goes into this show, you know, the cameras and the audio and uh, so on and so forth. So we're glad that you can see us and hear us. Now, today is going to be uh, an interesting show, something we've, I don't want to say we've never done it, but in this format, it's going to be new. And uh, we'll talk about that uh, as we get into the show. Yeah, I'll, I'll get into that one minute. But I do yeah, love yeah. Carla's comment because she wrote, Good morning. I enjoyed the newsletter on Friday. It was the only email I got that wasn't advertising Black, Black Friday. Friday. <laughs> do, you, do you know my tendency to go to Best Buy Thanksgiving? I had to just stop myself because really? because that's only like a half a mile from all these TVs that are going to be on sale. These you, big screen you TVs. You feel like you need a new one? Uh, yeah, well mine's 2012. Is that is that old enough to want a new one? It's 10 yeah. years old. It's newer than my car. <laughs> you and your cars. <laughs> yeah. But no, my TV yeah. still works. It's fine. And that's what I'm yeah. saying. It's a temptation that I have to just resist. And and you can justify it sometimes too because you're like, "Oh, they're 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 not that expensive now. Exactly. You you know so you're looking at it like that's a better TV and it was it's less money than when I bought my TV back in 2012, right? And so you go in there like ooh you know. But the same thing happened about a year ago. I went into Best Buy for something else. Came across this TV, 55 inch. I said, how much is this? 250 dollars. You know, what? you know what's wrong with it? Nothing. That's the sale price. Put it in the car. <laughs> I called Dana on the way home. I said, hey, can you move some things around in the bedroom? <laughs> What'd you buy? Uh, you bought a TV, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I bought a TV for the bedroom. <laughs> I remember when we we uh, remodeled our old house, I bought a TV that was on sale. It was half price because it was being discontinued. So it was three thousand dollars. Oh my god! But the regular price was six thousand. Jeez! And well, was, they used to be my first. And plasma, it was a plasma TV. My first yeah. plasma TV was thirty five hundred dollars. Oh wow! And uh, I don't yeah. think they even do plasma anymore. No, no, uh, they don't. No, don't that's know if old I've technology. Ever paid that much for a TV? Right. No. So <laughs> everything now is LED screen, and uh, it's they're cheap to make now. Yeah. I remember getting our first TV. Because not everybody on our block had a TV. So, in general, a TV. The first time ever. Okay. And my dad black explaining to me what it was going to be. Oh, they didn't have color TV. So it was black and white? Oh, everything yeah. was black and white. Actually, yeah. my grandmother had a color TV, but there were no color shows. shows. Except 
Disney on Sunday, so we'd all go over to her house. Sunday and then back night in the sixties, when, when new color. shows would would uh, start in the fall, they'd say and in color. Yeah, that was a big selling point. Yeah, it, or, or shows that were already on in black and white. After two or three Changed years, they go to color, and it was a big uh, deal. Sometimes it was in living color. In living color <laughs> on NBC with a peacock. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. So, so enough today. of pop culture. Today, the people are waiting. What yeah. the heck is this show going to be about? Icky Bonna. Icky Bob Crane? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> no, Icky Bonna is a Japanese art form of um, I, flower, flower arrangement. Aging, right? Yeah, exactly. But, you know... They can't just make it be flower arranging. It's it's flower arranging with a purpose. So you know, there's you're you're putting elements into it: earth, wind, color, fire, fire, yeah, earth, wind, and fire. <laughs> I would I, I avoided that one right there. Yeah, just you to don't know. want to put fire in there. <laughs> no. But um um Naoko Zaima uh, wrote a book inspired Ikebana. Um, and we're going to use her book to guide us through this discussion about this uh, floral arrangements. If you're watching on Facebook Live right now, you can see I brought in a selection of plants and branches and vases to be able to um, kind of, you know, show people as we kind of go along. Because I really like the form of Ikebana compared to just general um, flower bouquets. Because for people that have a yard like me, where you just have a wide selection of plants and flowers and, you know, leafy plants, not always flowering plants, it gives you that opportunity to put together an arrangement and you can just go into your yard. You know, not everybody is John who has, you know, thousands of roses that, you know, John can go out and create a rose bouquet and with ease. John can start a nursery. <laughs> but if but if you only have a couple rose plants, you can't create a bouquet usually. I mean, it's very rare that on that plant you're going to get 16, 17 roses that That's are all in the same. That's why they make bud faces, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just put one. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's one. But Ikebana, you put one rose with, you know, a few plants or something like that. And it, it you can create an arrangement. So anyways... Um, you know, in Ikebana, you see things indoors that you don't normally see, right? Yeah, because they're trying to simulate a, a outdoor environment. Right. You know, they'll use a branch or something so else. A lot of things else. from nature that would normally not be brought in the house. Yeah, so that's really cool. So we're going to talk about it. I'm going to read some experts from her book, and, and we're going to put together some um, arrangements here in studio and do our best to describe it for people listening over the radio. <laughs> But if you are, um, you know, listening, go to our Facebook and watch. Sorry. <laughs> what are you laughing read, He's reading comments. I was reading Dana's comment. Uh oh. We need another TV like you need another plant over here. <laughs> <laughs> Do the fish have a TV? Do the fish have one yet? No, but they can see it from where I have them uh -oh. located. Uh -oh. Absolutely. Good one, Dana. Yeah. Um, Sorry. So, yeah, Joyce had an audio problem, which I assumed was on her end, and I think it was. She said, back on now. No. So, uh, all right. Yeah. And then uh, I just, I'm getting a message. Everything's fine. No breaks on the audio. We're good to go. Well, thank you for that. We do appreciate people reaching out just in case it is on our end. So, how much experience do you have doing this, Tiger? You came in and kind of made a little arrangement as, as, when you came into the studio today. Yeah, I kind of started a few different ones just so that way when we're actually talking about it during the show, I'd have some things started. Um, so, again, I've actually kind of followed this kind of style for a while because. When I started gardening, um, I established that I can't just go out and pick, bou pick bouquets very well because it's very difficult. Like I say, like unless you have a, a wide, um, a, a good number of plants that are flowering, it's hard to create a bouquet because you usually only have onesie twosies here and there. Um, and so I started looking at this because I started, you know, they use a lot of banana leaves or, or branches or other things. And then they just put like maybe one bird of paradise flower in the arrangement. And so, you know, I've, I've looked at it for a few years and that's the way that I do arrangements in my house is because I can only pull in one or two branches. Is, is or the flowers. challenge, let's say the centerpiece are a few roses. Yeah. Is the challenge what to put in and around like the garnish around the yeah. rose or the centerpiece of what you're trying to display? Yeah, exactly. How do you showcase that centerpiece? What do you know, 
that was a good use of words garnish around it to kind of make it pop a little mm-hmm. bit more. Um, you no, know, but in Ikebana, um, let me see. There was a there was an expert in here, and um, I'll get to it. But they have these certain elements. Um, here we go. Um, oh, nine placements of the including the elements that the spiritual mountain receiving waiting. An element representing a waterfall, a supporting branch, a stem that represented a stream, another to represent an overlook, and then two to represent both the front and back of the body. So that's the nine elements that are supposed to be incorporated into, if you want to call it Ikebana. Right. Those nine elements need to be in your arrangement. Now, see, I would just find things that look good. <laughs> Not giving all that thought, and and I, well, these look good together. I'm I'm going to add all these things. Now that said, don't you have to know what each of the so-called garnishes around your centerpiece, what they represent? Like you, you, you mean like about the earth. rose represents it. You you the rose doesn't necessarily represent one particular thing all the time. Right. It could be your waterfall. It could be the front or back of your body. It could be different things. So Do you rose, determine what the waterfall is? You determine is? what the waterfall okay. is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Right. I'm getting it. Like, I'm a, like, okay. So, so, you know, if if anything you can get out of Ikebana. And it, you if, know, I, we got to take a break. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so wrapped up in this. I, I'm getting. I'm running late. You're, you're getting me hot here. I know. It's No, this is good, though. So <laughs> we're going to take a break. I've, I've got to stay on time for the network. We're going to take a quick break on Facebook. Welcome those on Biz Talk Radio. So sorry, didn't mean to ignore you because you're so vital to the existence of Garden America. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. Okay, just like that, we are back. Those of you on Facebook Live, we appreciate it. As we get into this uh, this morning, this, this uh, arrangement... And as Tiger continues to discuss uh, what it's all about, feel free to comment, uh, questions, comments on Facebook. And, of course, those on BizTalk Radio. This is a pre-recorded show. You're more than welcome to tune in every Saturday morning, 8 o'clock in the West Coast, 11 o'clock Eastern Time Zone, and uh, watch us live and, uh, you know, get involved. It's a Garden America radio show on Facebook. You know, one of the, uh, one of the differences between Ikebana and other arrangements is that there's no symmetry. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, in a yeah. lot of arrangements, uh, symmetrical is what you're looking I, for. I think that's where my head is, is yeah. this, the symmetrical aspect of it. Right. Where this doesn't have to reflect that. No, and and Tiger's talking about bringing things in from uh, outdoors. Uh, one of the key features of Ikebana is you want to see something unexpected, mm. something you would, you're just not, your mind's not set that uh, you know this belongs here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. It's, it's a little bit different, and um, you know, so we've talked about combination plantings and containers before, and we talked right. about your thriller, your filler, your spiller. You know, the the upright plant that takes the attention, the filling plant that you know makes the pot look full and dense, and then something cascading the pot to make it um, soften the edges of the container. And, you know, whatever you use, whatever colors, those elements make it look like that's a beautiful arrangement that you put in there, right? Use in, you know, I feel Ikebana kind of does the same thing. It just gives you the guide. Whatever you put into it is your choice. Right. But it gives you that guide. And so for I think most people, when you're talking about bouquet arrangement, it's very difficult because they are trying to deal with symmetry. Right. And, you, you know, but with this... Because you toss all that out the window. Yeah, right? and, and and you can do it with, I mean, you know, there, there's a chapter in here about just one plant. Like, all she uses was poppy flowers. And it's just interesting to kind of see an arrangement where it's three flowers, but she used a, uh, you know, wire or something that to curve the stem a little bit. Right. And, and it looks beautiful and artful. Um, Nobody can argue with you. Yeah. Hey, this is my arrangement. This is the way I see things. This is my waterfall. You know, this, <laughs> this is my uh, my wind, my yeah, earth. Yeah, exactly. So. I remember Sharon Asakawa telling me, and I, I, I apologize because I can't remember the exact number, 
But she said, uh, an Ikebana master, uh, one of the things that very, very few people could achieve was the arrangement of 11 aspidistra leaves. And, really? Yeah, and the, because they all had to be uh, turned in a s- certain spiral or something. Uh-huh. I can't, maybe one of our listeners knows, but it was a number of aspidistra leaves. And and that's something you usually don't see in arrangements, right? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's really interesting. And, and I mean, you know, it's really neat, obviously, you know, being a Japanese art form, like you just said. Right. They're going to take something so, I don't want to say simple, but, but something that would, that, that would be so basic yeah, or right. in your eyes so easy. And they make it so critically right. placement, okay. you know, Can and all we that. compare this somewhat to feng shui? I think so, in the sense of you know you're trying to create a um, a feeling from it. And, and yeah, like, but feng shui has got all kinds of uh, rules and regulations. Well, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, to but a degree. There's a yeah. There's a lot be, behind that. So let me let me read this first part of um, what she wrote about the history of ikebana. Ikebana is the Japanese art of arranging flowers has a long, rich history created over many centuries. There are various theories about the origin of Ikebana, so I have attempted to introduce it here to give a sense of all that goes into this complex yet simple art. Right. One theory is that Ikebana began as a Buddhist flower ritual when Buddhism was introduced to Japan around the 6th century. Others believe it came from the ancient Japanese custom of decorating evergreen trees with flowers, as a way to invoke the gods. In any case, it seems certain that the development of Ikebana expresses the unique spiritual and heartfelt connection Japanese people have towards flowers and plants. I mean, you know, what she's saying there is people saw pine trees, and they're like, they're too basic. (laughs) And we need to put something in that pine tree to add to it. Kind of like bonsai. Is, Is bonsai Japanese too? Bonsai, yeah, yeah. bonsai, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they're like, it, it's a beautiful pine tree. I think we, bo- bo- we could do better. Bonsai and bonsai were Japanese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> does does this relate in any way, shape, or form to a Japanese garden on a larger scale? So you know, it's funny is that um, I wouldn't. I, I mean, it does because I'm sure they plant things in I'm their sh- garden to kind of. I'm sure it's not just haphazard. Either. Garden design right. as well, but. Um, as they were saying, this um, was a, a, a art form that was a Buddhist flower ritual. So where where it came was it's kind of like, you know, the re- and I thought this was a fun segment for this time because Thanksgiving. We just had Thanksgiving. Right. And a big thing to do in Thanksgiving is set the centerpiece. You know, you know some people put a cornucopia. You know, some people put flowers, different things out there in the middle to represent a feast. You know, the Thanksgiving centerpiece is supposed to show like we are feasting here we are we're bountiful this year and we're thankful for everything and you know the 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 flower ceremony again is again it there was a tea there was tea that went along with it so some of the arrangements represent this the tea flower and represent this idea that they're they're sitting down and gathering and so you know in the you know idea that this arrangement is supposed to be a centerpiece for a a gathering so kind of like thanksgiving Mm -hmm. um so it wasn't their thanksgiving they didn't sit down and feast but it definitely was a centerpiece to a tea ceremony or some kind of meeting and so i think it's kind of neat because you know you talk about could it represent their garden it's almost like what john says where it's bringing the garden inside their home to give you that same feeling Mm -hmm. but in a smaller way yeah um, one of the things I mentioned, I didn't bring it in, um, for the, for anybody that does flowers and uh, John, do you see them? The, the use of, uh, they call it a frog and I got the name, yeah. the name in here in the Japanese form is different. They call it the, um, Ken, Kenzan, a frog and a frog. Do you know what a frog is for flower arrangement, Brian? The answer is no. <laughs> 
No, no, no. If you, you have to think about no, it that no, long. That was, that was a filter. You were, yeah. Uh, that was my filter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I figured you're trying to think of something funny. Yeah. yeah. Or but, I've, I've seen little frogs <laughs> on the pots as a decorative sort of, a, you know. But, but imagine something about the size of a hockey puck. Okay. Okay. With just spikes in it. Just spikes all pointing one way upwards. And it's just imagine that a hockey puck with a bunch of spikes in it. And the use is, is that, you know, you look at Ikebana and you look at how do they make these flowers stand up straight in this vase, in this platter, in this whatever bowl, whatever it is. And they stick the stems of the tree branches, flowers, whatever, in that frog medium in the spikes. And that's what helps them hold upright into the arrangement. And it's a very integral part of arrangements because you'll see them use just a few branches and then they put it in a bowl and that's how they make them stand up in there. Um, in it's like think, a little tiny bed of nails. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and you know what's funny is that the one thing they don't always use and they don't mention it in the book, but in flower arrangements, there's the, I think more people are familiar with Oasis. That, right. that green block of foam yeah. that kind of does more or less the same thing. You stick the stems yeah. in it, and it holds the... It's like soft styrofoam. Yeah, that holds the flowers in the particular angle or upright or whatever it is you may use. But um, So the Icky Bonnie, they use that frog to hold up it, um, the arrangements, which is kind of neat because it allows them to do things that you wouldn't normally see just in a vase because... You know, in the vase, you're using the vase or you're using the branches um, to hold the plants up. Now, um, maybe a little bit later in the show, too, I want to show one of the ways that they talk about using the branches because they actually cut branches to hold other branches as well. So it's not just a matter of just throwing flowers in a vase and then letting it go. You have put a lot of thought into this, haven't you? you, you you've basically <laughs> ex expanded my train of thought. When, when, as somebody pointed out on Facebook, I froze. <laughs> it's good for me says, you froze. I think what Tiger was just talking about was um, using branches to hold up other branches. Did you see the picture in the newsletter of the Ikebana arrangement? Yeah. Yes. That uh, it looks like there's. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's okay. holding. There's things in that arrangement that are holding up other things. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so this can either be very simple or you could – very complicated to the untrained eye. Well, you know, that's just it, right, is you look at that picture, and I'll try to show some pictures through the um, Facebook um, Live as well. And you do. You see it, and you you, you look – that's simple. I, I can do that, right? You know, it's almost <laughs> like, like when you go to for therapy – and they give you pictures, and they go, what do you see in that picture? Yeah. And, you know, you might get four or five different answers to that. It's kind of the same way with this in looking at it, and your perception could change from one moment to another, or somebody else comes in and sees something different. Like, like I'll hold this up for you, Brian, to be able to see. And we got to take a break. I'm okay. sorry, Tiger. All right. Again, when you get back, we'll talk about I'm, it. I'm running late again because I'm, I'm so enthralled by this. So, again, uh, those on Facebook Live, feel free. Questions, comments. We're going to take a quick break. Back after these messages, Garden America on BizTalk Radio. We are back after that uh, BizTalk Radio break and uh, quite a bit shorter here on Facebook Live. Do stay with us. And, again, with our topic this morning, questions, comments, and we do have uh, – one right now, Tiger, I believe from uh, who's it from? Uh, Lila? Lila. Lila has she, a question. Yeah, she asked, "How do they? How do you spell um, the word they use for the floral frog? Frog, Kenzan, and it's K-E-N-Z-A-N. And Brian, I'm going to read their description. Okay. And I want you to know. I want you to tell me who said it best. Okay. An object composed of heavy lead plate covered in sharp pins. Its pins pierce through the bases of stems to hold them in the desired position. Now, what am I supposed to derive <laughs> out of that? Who said it does, best? Yeah, what do you, do yeah, you did Tiger understand? Say, was his description better, or does that give you a better uh, clue as to what he's talking about? My hockey about? puck with nails. In I like description. the hockey puck with nails. Yeah, right? Well, that sounded re – read that again just real quickly, because it sounded a bit violent. The, the can <laughs> 
The Kinzon is right. an object composed of heavy lead plate covered in sharp pins. Its pins pierce through the bases of the stems to hold them in the desired position. To me, that sounds like some kind of old-fashioned torture treatment. <laughs> if you didn't know what we were referring to? Yeah. So, uh, before the break, I was showing you a picture. Right, and, right. And John can see the flowers, and they're um, right. Asiatic lilies, right? Yeah. Asiatic, right? So... Asiatic lilies in a, in a glass vase. I'm going to hold it up for the camera to be able to see, too. Um, there's only one, aside from the Asiatic lilies, there's only one other plant element in there. And if I could look again, it's got maybe five or six leaves on it. And that's just a little snippet of a camellia. And so we're talking two plants, Asiatic lily and a camellia snippet in a bowl. But the way that they left the couple budded lilies, they didn't leave, they didn't have a flower from the camellia. It's only the foliage. Some of them are pointing upwards. You've got some of the leaves cascading over. You have some of them partially open. You know, they're taking those nine elements. And then they also include the medium you're putting it in. You know, uh, John in the newsletter had a uh, frame of. Um, not branches. They, what was it? Yeah, it looked like bamboo mixed with willow or yeah, something. Yeah, willow like that. and bamboo. So so in in so part of that is also the element, also the nine elements that you try to incorporate, you know, where this has the glass bowl. Um and they're achieving that Ikebana through that. And I mean, like I say, there's people out there that are gonna have an Asiatic lily blooming. Right. They got a camellia bush. Boom. You got your arrangement. Would would you say there are rules or no rules? Or is every rule your own rule? John John said it best. What was it? What'd you say, John? You you said the 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 best was um having trying to make it look like without rules, but having all of the rules to follow. Or you, you said it organized, before the show. Organized something, chaos. It was something like that, and whatever he said, it was the best description of it because it was you're basically I'll trying to go back to, and listen to the show. The, I think I, this I was know, even I, before. Yeah. But basically, you're trying to make this look wild. Like right. there, There's a couple of these, and I thought they were so cool because it looks like a wildflower bouquet. You know, they just put together a bunch of little flowers. And it looks like a wildflower. Like you're, something you'd come across in nature, like, oh, yeah. look, look at this. But there, there's, there's reason to it. Well, you know, when we talk about nature and you talk about gardening, you know, we always talk about how you plant in odds, meaning – you know, threes, fives, sevens when you're planting because nature doesn't plant evens. No, right, exactly. And, and again, this is, Ikebana is to make it look as if right. you, it, this could be something that just fell down on the ground yep. in your garden. Yep. And you're like, that's very pretty. And that's because of what they did. Your eye uh, accepts it for, for being pretty. The, the organized chaos of nature. Yeah. Yeah. You know, another thing about some of the Ikebana arrangements is that if you have a flower arrangement, like a bouquet of flowers, it lasts, what, a week, and then you throw it out? Yes. On Ikebana, you can replace elements. Mm -hmm. uh, some of what's in the arrangement may last up to a month, and other things may be a week, and you can take out the— Just keep replacing and yeah. keep it going. It's ongoing. Right. Oh. There's, um, there's another picture. I'm going to try to show on Facebook Live. And I thought this was the most interesting, almost basic um, uh, arrangement. And it's it has Nandina, heavenly bamboo, which hmm. is like a weed to us, yeah, I think, to yeah, some I degree. So, I mean, a lot of people find them beautiful. It's that kind of red, yellow, green bush. You know, it gets red berries on it. But it's Nandina with Veronica, and um, the other plant in it was... Uh, Liz Machia. But I mean, again, it looks as if somebody just went into their backyard and grabbed a few snippets and then put them into a, a vase here. And like John said, that Nandina probably can last for months, just the way it is. Yeah. But then the, you know, Veronica might need to change, changed out in a week and you just go and grab a new but snippet. But different things die at a different period of time. Some last longer, others not so much, and then you just keep adding and taking away. So yeah. it's it's ongoing. Yeah, you don't set it up and then it dies and you toss it away. You just you keep it alive yourself with what you're adding. Yes, 
Rick in uh, Star Idaho had a question, and he was wondering if you'd consider the Japanese the world's leader in horticulture. Ooh, man, Rick. I, I think in terms of creativity. Well, mm. I would say different things yeah. because yes. the English are... Mm -hmm. English per gardens? Yeah, pretty good when it comes to horticulture. Um, you could say that arguably the Japanese have been doing it longer. <laughs> well, I think the way I would put it, is the Japanese are the best in the world for taking something that's already there and making it perfect. Meaning, like, you know, look at the way they grow a strawberry. You know, in our growers, they grow strawberries in a field. They pick them and they right. put them in a bowl and they put them in the grocery store and we're happy because they're red and they're sweet and we like strawberries. The Japanese will will nurture one strawberry <laughs> and just, you know, cur you know, just, you know, make it live its best life. So that way, when it goes, you, you don't buy a, a bushel of strawberries, you buy three strawberries, right. but each strawberry is perfectly grown in just the right color. And you're going to eat it at just the right time that it's going to be the best strawberry you ever had. Um, a matter of fact, I was just cruising through social media and there is a Japanese citrus grower in Michigan, but it's all greenhouse. Right. But the way that they grow, and, and why did they pick Michigan? Nobody knows. But they knew they had to house these citrus trees because they wouldn't grow in Michigan otherwise. But they grow the fruit there perfectly. So when it's you know ripe and harvested, it's the perfect mandarin or orange or lemon or mm -hmm. whatever it is. And... So I wouldn't say that's exotic because it's a lemon. It's a mandarin. It's, right. you know, that, that's nothing new. But the way they grow it was they grow it into perfection. One of my old uh, part business partners was Tim Wada, who was the owner of Plug Connection. Mm. Yeah, I remember Tim. And he came from uh, – went out to a Japanese market, came, uh, came back after lunch with uh, a little carton that had three strawberries in it. <laughs> Twenty four ninety five. Oh my gosh! For three strawberries, and he's. I said, "Wow, that seems like a lot." He says, "Yeah, but look at them." He said, "I I just had to get it and see what they were like." Yeah. And he took one out, took a bite, and his comment was, "Well, that's disappointing." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they looked great. Yeah. But didn't it, really it taste tasted, any different yeah, than right. a regular strawberry. We, uh, Tiger mentioned we want our strawberries to be real sweet. Yeah. You know, off the vine. Yeah. If if I would if I was to grow if I was to try to get my full full mind full time dedicated behind developing one thing, strawberries. It'd be a seedless strawberry. Yeah. Why would you want a seedless strawberry? I don't like the seeds in the strawberry. Really? Yeah. John, is it? I don't like it. What about raspberry preserves? Do you not eat? I those? don't like the seeds. Yeah. No. I, any jam or jelly with seeds? See, I in won't it? eat raspberry jelly. It has to be preserves because I need the seeds in there. Oh. Is the strawberry the only fruit where the seeds are on, on the, the outside? outside? On the outside, or is there like one? We've discussed this before. Mm, is there I one think. or two others? Uh, strawberry comes to mind. Yeah. Because it's so. Right, regularly it's, seen. It's, yeah, I mean, you know, you, we just mentioned all raspberries. Berries, all we the just, berries are like that. Yeah, right. Like Black raspberries, berries. blackberries, everything in the genus Rubus, Brian. Right. Yeah. Those are those. All those little the nodules Rubus, are seeds. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They might not be on the next day necessarily outside of the berry. Right. But those little nodules are the seeds in there. You know, I think we're going to take a break. <laughs> Just so we can stay just on because, time for once. Just because you can figure things out when you go to edit this <laughs> Right, again. because now I know that you know we're, we're fine and we're on time. For our friends on BizTalk Radio, of course, uh, do stay with us. And again, uh, your questions, your comments on Facebook Live, we appreciate that. Thank you for joining us. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I'm Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, and John Magnesco. We are taking this break back after these messages for our good friends on BizTalk Radio. We have returned, and again, if you are tuned in on BizTalk Radio, this is the final segment of hour number one with news coming up at the top of the hour. During that break, John reminded us that we did not do the quote of the week. I knew something was missing. 
like uh, leaving the house without putting your shirt on, and it's a cold, blustery winter day with the temperature 32 degrees. You know, I would always dream that I went to school without my shoes, but I never, never thought of going without my shirt. But you never had a naked dream where you were at school naked? No. That's pretty common. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the quote of the week. Um, it was from Tony Snow. Tony Snow, the from England. The... No, no, no. Tony Snow was the... Oh, uh, the talk show host? Well, he was a reporter. Repo- okay, yeah. right, right. And he said, if you think Independence Day is America's defining holiday, think again. Thanksgiving deserves deserves that title, hands down. Yeah, I did read that quote yesterday when I got the newsletter. Sounds like he disagreed with it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm I'm still I'm marinating that on that. I'm not sure. <laughs> I agree with them a hundred percent. By the way, uh, Veronica in Spring Valley, Brian says she doesn't like the seeds either. Thank you, Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> See, she's a smart woman. Smart woman. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mentioned earlier about using the branches to hold other branches, and John had shown that picture where they created a a frame out of right. bamboo and branches. Right. Um, I, it reminded me of uh, Melinda Myers used to talk about hugel hugel culture, hugel. where you just where you just lay down a bunch of branches hugel into cor- culture culture, where you lay down a bunch of branches and create right. your garden bed out of it. Hugel right. Culture. No, she. You actually buried the wood in yeah. her garden. Yeah, and it yeah. rotted under there. Yeah, composted. But um, so I have a pit where I tried that. <laughs> How's it working out? Still a bunch know. of branches. I don't know. I had a little uh, crevice that actually a big crevice that almost a ravine that I filled with tree trunks and stuff. Well, it went from a crevice to a ravine just yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. But um. You know, I mentioned they use branches in the Ikebana design, and sometimes that branch isn't at the angle you want or you need help supporting it. And so kind of like when you're grafting something, I'm going to show here on the video, I've I've taken, you know, just one of the basic branches here, and you cut some, some slivers into it or joints that you can then put your other branch. And, you know, if this was sticking one on top as a vertical element, if you want to change it because you're trying to achieve a waterfall or, you sure. know, you know, something else, you can just stick it into there and, you know, with some wiring or, or if you do a better job than I did, it'll hold it at the angle hmm. that you want. But and, it also looks very natural like that just happened in nature. Well, because you're using the same, mm-hmm. you know, branches, you're using the same things. And then you pick a few of these leaves and next thing you know, you've got your your upright element Mm -hmm. or your cascading element and you know in um florist design i just feel like it's really focused on a upright vase bouquet everything's symmetrical yeah right and where with this there's a lot of horizontal and it's very hard to achieve that unless you really start to use some of these other things like branches or the frog or oasis material because it's, you can't get the flower to lean off to the left by itself. Are there any itself. florists that specialize in this? Like if you wanted to buy something prearranged like that and they would have several samples oh, of, yeah. of these different arrangements? I think, if if I'm not mistaken, uh, Naoko is in L.A. And I think she has a website where you can order specific arrangements from her. But wouldn't it be great to and, go into a florist? And she's got all the pictures there. and Like a Japanese florist, let's say, that had, you know, maybe half a dozen or a dozen of these Well, that's my point. I think that's what she's doing. Yeah, but you got to go to her website. <laughs> I'm, sa- I'm saying walk walk into a store and actually walk out with it. Oh, I'm sure they have them. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was driving at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to process whether it would be great I think, be, I, I think it might it be different. interesting. I, I don't no, know I think, about I think, great. I think great because you know what? Everybody, like the heat, like Tiger mentioned, symmetrical florist. You buy this, everything's upright, this and that. You walk in and give somebody that, and they're like, oh, that's different. So maybe not great, but different. How's that? <laughs> different, I'll buy. Different. I'll buy that no, right I think, away. I think it would be a lot of fun. I think it would be fun. Could be. But then if you're looking at, I'm, 
there you're paying for would be paying uh, for the artistry as well as you're the you're paying for elements. somebody else's idea, right? That goes into that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And it just depends on whether or not someone would appreciate it. I could picture someone going in and what go, "What is that?" <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything bigger? <laughs> well, why, why is that branch leaning over? Can you straighten it back up? Because we are conditioned yeah. to, to be symmetrical. So you know, to John's point about creating your own. So I'll mention the the state of mind. It says you have to be oh, in that's, that's in order to do ikebana. So number one. Begin with a clear mind, okay? You have to be serene and calm. Be mindful of connecting with your heart. It's a reflection of your soul, Brian, okay? Be careful and intentional with your preparation and take care of the finished arrangements. And just, just don't just, you don't just go into a Vons and all look at the shelf in, all and that just goes into it. pick one. I, I can clear my mind. You communicate with the flowers as you arrange them. So you talk to them. You you I can do that. You observe and you you look at their charm and uniqueness. Keep the area around the vase clean and tidy while arranging the flowers. It helps you keep a clear mind. So you know those five. You have to have that state of mind before you even attempting. Yeah, before you this. even attempt this. Now, how clear was your mind when you set this up this morning? <laughs> well, I'm I'm working in a radio studio where I've got. You over there and asking me about everything and moving around. So and John disagreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've disagreed with no. Tiger yet. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not I see today. John yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still Googling <laughs> my disagreements. No, I yeah. was trying to find uh, uh, if there were um, any Local Ikebana florists. Florist. Right. Yeah. And so there's one called the uh, Unlikely Florist, Brian. The yeah. unlikely forest? Florist. Oh, florist. That, yeah. You know what? That's a good name. That's yeah. an excellent name. They do custom Ikebana arrangements. We're going to take a break. I'm going to stay on time uh, again with the last segment and this segment for our friends on BizTalk Radio. So do stay with us. Uh, if you're on BizTalk Radio, news coming up top of the hour. Hopefully you get hour number two in your market because that's when we return at six minutes after. Do stay with us. Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox on this uh, show after Thanksgiving 2022. Stay with us. We are back. This is the beginning of hour number two. If you're tuned in on BizTalk Radio, for the rest of us, the rest of you on Facebook Live, we're going to just continue on with our discussion today, which is rather unique and uh, does evoke a lot of questions. And, John, you said you found a custom uh, florist regarding what we discussed earlier. <laughs> right. During it was the break. called the, the Unlikely f Florist. Which is a great name. Right. Also is. in San Diego is Ikebana International. Well, I was going to read. So if you're looking for a florist... In Naoko's book, there are about 300 schools that teach Ikebana all over the world. But the three major schools, which are characterized by a modern and freestyle, are Ikenobo, Ohara Ryu, and Sogetsu Ryu. And if I butchered those names, I'm sorry. But you better, you know, it's like a doctor. You better have, they better have some Doesn't credentials. Doesn't Ryu mean dragon? Ryu? R-Y-U? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Wait, I'm not Ryu. sure. I, I have no clue. Ryu. You know, Eric used to use that that term. It was in it's one of those playing, games. Yeah, he was playing video games. Yeah. So yes. It's something. Ryu. You're, you're, Ryu was the right. name of the guy. Because him and his wife were totally into the Japanese culture. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Ryu. So, yeah, you better um, evaluate your, your florist and see what school of Ikebana they went to. I'm just still going over how I have to clear my mind before I even attempt this. My heart has to be right. Keep it clean. Now, John, in rose shows, they have multiple varieties of arrangement techniques that are judged, right? They've got the single rose. They've got bouquets, floating floating ones. The floral arrangements are, are uh, something I never get into, but there are different classes of floral arrangements, and I think that you could have a uh, – 
an Ikebana style yeah. in there. I imagine you where you have to use a rose, but then maybe they use a right. few other things. Right. Because um you know, I think the rose is just a it's one of those plants in this style that I think just would make it stand out I so, think so, yeah. so different and so That's unique. That's the first thing that came to my mind was the rose. Yeah. I w- when I think of Japanese roses or roses in Japanese arrangements, I'm thinking of single flowers mm-hmm. rather than many petals. Right. Like the, just, well, yeah. The yeah, something single, where you could see the stamens. Yeah, you know, that, that sounds like a, a Native American name. What? Ma- many petals. <laughs> <laughs> this is my daughter, Many Petals. <laughs> it's a great name. Oh. But I mean, you know, also Brian, I mean, for you who have a very eclectic patio yeah, yeah, with absolutely. a few different plants, nothing nothing a lot, you can do this where you know, you talk about how you just bring in a green planet rose or um what's the other one that you have the multicolored rose, the abra not abra simcelabim. Simcelabim. You, know, you just bring it into the house and you put it in a vase yep. and there it is. Which I do, yeah. Well, but now, you know, you can add it to your uh, splitly philodendron and Well, I have to get one first. I, oh, you don't have one? No, I don't. It's, really? I do not have one. You you when I walked in, you were like, that's my favorite plant. I know. I know. And you don't well, have well, one. Well, don't you yearn for something? <laughs> <laughs> I yearn. You, know, you know it's you know it's you know the reason why Brian doesn't have a splitly philodendron is none have been thrown away. I know. You know what? No, I, I haven't none found have any been, in the dumpster yet. None have been that's left. Right. That that's a very good by point. the dumpster. And you know what? You talked about my eclectic uh, collection of the patio. You're you're right. Uh, it, there's a lot of just various things that not a lot of people would have. Yeah. Like the the bottle tree. Yeah. <laughs> people look at that and go. What is that? I really don't know anyone else who has a bottle tree and a pot on their <laughs> no, patio. No. And. Uh, yeah, just the, the various eclectic collection of plants. Yeah. And then, you know what I've got to do is I've got to take a, I'll take a short video of the walkway so you can see what I've done as, as you walk in. Because all the plants that I couldn't no longer put in the patio because there were too many, I put along the sidewalk leading up to it. And I think your patio is a giant Ikebana arrangement. <laughs> I, I think, you know what, I think you're it's right. It's got the waterfall yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. So it's interesting, uh, the various... Uh, I love what you said, though. Nobody's thrown anything away lately. <laughs> Maybe uh, Tiger will get you a uh, for Christmas a Thai constellation. Oh goodness gracious! Man. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Keep waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for my own. But the split leaves philodendron was very popular in the 50s and 60s. You watch any old TV show, whether they're real or not, right. in the background or in the office or at somebody's home. You, that's what you see. Yeah, but now the ones we're talking about with the variegated leaves, yeah. uh, you're looking at for a plant five thousand, six thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, for a six inch pot or well, a cutting. Better not kill that. <laughs> one. So what's this leaf worth here? About five hundred dollars? Well, no, these ones are dime a dozen now. The split leaf. Well, actually, yeah. they're more than a dime for a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> they do well indoor. Good indoor plant though, right? Yeah, it, you know what? They need a lot of light, though, in order to split. Otherwise, they just put out <clears throat> leaves that are, are not splitting. So you want the split, you got to have the light. Yep. Um, I just planted this one outside a few months ago, and it's just taken off. I put it in a kind of a protected area. It just has taken off so well. Love it. You know, I love And then when you plant them outside, they just get bigger, bigger plant, bigger leaves. So and really they'll cool set too. fruit. Yeah, yeah. They Deli- do what? Monstera deliciosa. They set fruit. That's where the deliciosa comes from. It's a great. I'll bring, I'll bring you in a fruit. Yeah, a fr- you sure? Sets. Oh, yeah. it tastes great too. Yeah, really tropical. Uh, Tanya up in uh, San, San Jose, Jose yeah, says she wants to see a picture of your plants. We frequently put those in the yeah. newsletter. Yeah, but individual. Maybe, maybe a. Well, you've had pictures of your patio we've in even there. Posted the video. Yeah. Did, did we do a vi- did we do a video over there? You I and think I? Where we posted it. Where no, just you. One time you panned and it had the little fountain right. and everything, and I think we posted that. So, it might be in our um, archive of photos on our Facebook page, Tanya. Because, um, but it is always. Carla changing. says that she wants to see more of the patio too, or the garden. What I'll do is I'll incorporate the walkway and yeah. then lead it into the patio. Maybe but like you don't want to have too much evidence online for the HOA to. <laughs> 
be able to yeah. see. You, you know what's funny is I think that ship sailed because a new <laughs> a new HOA association took over. Uh-huh. Yeah. They don't do the inspections anymore. Really? They're not really concerned. And where I'm located, I'm off the beaten track. I'm not right out, you know, facing the parking lot or in other people's view per se. Yeah, it's hidden. It's tucked yeah, away. The only person you're affecting is the person that lives upstairs, upstairs. and they love it. Yeah. No, oh, they love it. Yeah. Because I'm taking care of, you know, their area as well. Even though, even though the the landscapers come down there and they'll blow the leaves and rake, they are very careful to go in and around my plants. I'm um probably a month away from wanting to share some photos of my garden because yeah you know, at the, for sure at, the, at this time of year my yard I do a lot of plumerias and, and other plants right. so they're kind of fading they're not looking as good um, but what <clears throat> is emerging right now are the bulbs so I have yes. paper whites the narcissus and freesias and as soon as those are going to be blooming <clears throat> it's going to because I, I don't know if, if you guys remember but it, I mentioned this before that. Since we have the nursery, anything that's left over at the end of the year, I just plant in my yard. Right. And so now I have Why thousands of paper white bulbs and hundreds of freesia bulbs along the pool. And when they bloom, it's just so colorful and such a cool mix. I, lo- I love to see them when they come up now. Yeah. That'd be, you know, I follow uh, a few people on social media and they show where they plant these beds of bulbs. And they just, you know, they have a bed. They put the bulbs down, and then they just cover them with soil right. rather than, like, digging and planting. Right. And I'm like, that's that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> and I just plant them and then forget them. I know, Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I remember in Michigan, we used to sell tulip bulbs in 100, uh, 100 uh, bulb bags. And people would come in and, you know, buy 100 at a time. Yeah, all you know, all the same variety, just, just put huge beds of them. And you know, to floral arrangement, that's where you know a lot of people will then, you know, get their get their floor get their arrangement flowers from whether they're tulips or dahlias mm-hmm. or freesias or paper whites. You know, is they'll they'll use those as their cut flowers because, I mean, they're blooming. They're going to be blooming for me. Paper whites and freesias here probably in another month. I imagine. I mean, definitely the paper whites. Maybe the freesias a little longer. You know what I just had come up? Uh, speaking of bulbs reminds me, and I don't know if yours came up, uh, but Carla gave us some Watsonia, mm-hmm. and mine are just coming up now. Where did I plant those at? How long has that been? <laughs> well, she gave them to us in the spring, okay, but so. the summer was their dorming season. Yeah. And so uh, when I uh, planted them, I put a metal stake in each group. Oh, so I would so make smart. sure not to dig there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't remember where I planted mine. Uh, oh, well, they're so. just coming up, and they look like gladiola sleeves when they come up. We're going to take oh. a break uh, for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. Back after these messages, Facebook Live. Stay with us. More questions and more comments here on Garden America. Okay, we are back. Happy weekend to you. Happy weekend after Thanksgiving. And thank you for spending part of your weekend with us here on Garden America. We love seeing your names on Facebook. That is uh, so nice for us to see each and every week. I'm Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco. We are arranging today in uh, what style again, Tiger? The Ikebana style. And Ikebana. Before I forget, I do want to mention for people, because we've been talking about this book inspired Ikebana from Naoko Zaima. Zaima. Don't know how to pronounce that, but um, I would say Zaima. Zaima, but so, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's a yellow pear press book. Um, I'm sure you can find it online. Inspired by inspired Ikebana. If you're looking for a gift again, we're getting into the holidays. You know, great book, beautiful pictures. Um, on the back, it's got a um, a uh, quote from Susanna Seton, an author of Simple Pleasures of the Garden. You will learn to create outer beauty and gain inner peace in this gorgeous Ikebana how-to. It's a sure way to bring creativity and joy to your life. It will take your mind elsewhere. Yes. That's for sure. Yes. However, however you look at this. And, 
Again, I thought your comment to that quote was going to be, oh, Susanna. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you cry for me. But, um, you know, unlike other gardening books or florist books, I, I really like this style because, as I mentioned before, you can you can pretty much find any of these elements in your yard. Sure. Very easy to go find a few branches, greenery, couple flowers, and then put something together. The only thing you're going to need is a uh, florist frog, and then you'll be ready to go. <laughs> and she, <Spiky> hockey pucks. <laughs> she combines um, traditional techniques mm-hmm. with modern yeah. ideas in Ikebana. Yeah, which kind of updates everything, so it makes Would it Shannon easier. Would Shannon be inter- interested in this? No, absolutely not. Wow, she loves she's a hundred percent symmetrical. Not only symmetrical, she's uh, what we call roundy moundy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you better explain, Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> well, roundy moundy is just a, a perfect ball hedge of flowers. Yeah. She loves those. How about pictures on the wall? Do they have to be exactly straight? You know, is and, and everything everything is symmetrical. Yesterday she bought. Uh, she's planning for a Christmas party for people at work, and she bought one of those uh, glass Christmas trees that has the light in the bottom. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but not one. It had to be two, so one could go on each end of the table. Oh man! And there's a, a light on each, a lamp on each end of the table. So it, so, so each so, ta- yeah, each it's side perfectly of the table. symmetrical. Oh. So, okay. but she likes that. That's the way. Yeah, way no, your mind works. That. Yeah. I'm 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 the straight in the picture guy in the wall. Um, yeah, but that's just. I mean, how could you live without a straight picture? Some people don't care. Really. You know, it's it's you know what bothers one person doesn't bother the other. It's like if, I'm sure in your household, where I live, what bothers me doesn't bother Dana, and vice versa. Well, I I a little OCD, so there's oh, certain things. You're speaking to the. King I think of I OCD. might be worse than you, though. Really? Like when you go to the store and buy a cup of coffee, do you have to make you know the sleeve you put on has to be facing the front, <laughs> so that it's not off to the side, and then when you put the top on. The little slit where you sip out of it's got to be facing the front. You don't want it off to the side. You're, you're right. You're, you're more than I am. Yeah. You're exactly that would give right. You, it'd give me a headache if I drank it sideways like that. I, You know, it's funny. You've got to have um, some of that in you, right? Oh, I, I'm sure. I, 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 I definitely. I'll pull my cup I, out. See? <laughs> right there. Crazy big. This right under here. <laughs> wow. So I, I never would have even thought of that. See? So, you know, what's it's funny as you guys were saying this and you were talking about Shannon and different things. I think the one thing that kind of keeps some people in check is just money. Cause can you imagine if you had all the money in the world and you had to buy everything symmetrical and have everything perfect all the time. If, and that would be easy for you because you would have the money to keep it that way or however you need, you'd be able to hire people to help right. you with it. But I think it, we all that, that don't have those funds get, toiled with because you you wanted that but then it's your job to keep it and it's just exhausting after a while (laughs) well you know that's funny you mentioned that because um we're in the process of uh, building an arbor for the rose garden and we're going to have two arbors and they're going to be split right now the plan is in the center to have a knot garden yeah but then I started thinking about the maintenance of a knot garden to keep it and, looking good. And if you had somebody that was there gardening for you, it'd be no problem. Yeah. So I'm I'm thinking maybe a parterre instead because it gives you the effect of a knot garden. Uh, this might be something we need to do a video of. You better explain everything yeah, what's just a, what's briefly a... to people that are listening and watching both of those terms that you just talked about. Well, a knot garden is um, it's often done with herbs. Uh, or, or herbaceous type plants, and if you look up, uh, and we're talking a KNOT garden, right? Not an NOT because that would be cement. Like you would tie your <laughs> no. shoe, right? Not. Yeah. So, but Shoelaces. it it looks like the plants have been uh, tied in knots. Uh, in in Google pictures of knot gardens, and you'll you'll see. And then the other one was that you. Well, might a parterre do... is um, yeah, what's that? is similar. It's that's spelled P A R T E R R E, and it's similar to a knot garden, but um, 
not as intricate and doesn't require – all these require uh, uh, borders and things that need to be clipped. In colder climates, boxwood is the best thing to yeah. use. I'm thinking out here uh, – if I do a knot garden, I might use uh, Santalina. Okay. Because that's an herb that would be easy to easy, trim yeah. and a little hardier, a little more drought to- tolerant than uh, yeah. boxwood. Rochelle says there is hope, help for you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere there's hope. Yeah, eventually. Uh, yeah. You're, the coffee cup thing is just, to me, is like, wow. Yeah, that's fine. I, I thought think... I was bad. Yeah. That makes me feel better. That's what therapy is. This was therapy for me. Well, see, you know, my th- my thought it. until you just brought this up now was that I think most people do this. <laughs> well, you know what? But it's different, right? But I because, get it. But I understand because, it. But here's the thing, okay? You, like John's coffee cup thing, keeping it aligned for him. Right. You, I know, with the studio. Like me, me bringing in all this stuff. Like is making you quiver over there and shake. Well, look at sure. all this mic holder things. Yeah. They're all well, but see, that's just it too. Is you know where John can bring in things, and you know you don't need to have it kept clean or or you right. know. So his coffee cup thing, but then your clean thing, and then John, I think it's you know might be driven crazy by all of the um, mic. What do you call these? The mic, mic flags. Mic flags that you of put on a stations. microphone from the different stations. There's a but there's order and there's something, something. to you, but to but John it just looks like a mess, craziness. Right. <laughs> you, you would you would set it up differently if you were to even. He do wouldn't it. have them. He wouldn't I have would them. clear them off. Yeah, he yeah. wouldn't have them. You would even do them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't do them. You but, haven't been to his library yet, huh? No. You know that's yeah. an idea for a show. It might be a boring show though, so we have to see what our listeners think. We got to take a yeah. quick break. Hold the thought. I'm going to try to stay on time. All right. As soon as we come back, I'll tell you. We're going to come back from this break on Biz Talk Radio Facebook Live. Stay with us. This is Garden America. Okay, we are back, and this is one of our longer segments. So, for those on uh, Facebook Live, uh, feel free with uh, your questions, your comments. Before the break, you had to interrupt John. You had an idea, right, about us doing something? Yeah, about a show. But uh, I first of all, I want to thank uh, Tanya in San Jose. She says, I'm with John on the coffee cup. <laughs> Thanks for validating my own. <laughs> That's good. See? <laughs> OCD. There's, there's some supporters out there. Yeah. yeah. But what's your idea then? Uh, um, again, it might be boring, so we'll see what the listeners think. But if we do a show from my library, mm-hmm. what if the show was on garden books? Yeah. Why not? And do the whole show. I mean, we certainly have plenty, right? Yeah. We now, could... with your library being as, as um, it's very, uh, what would you say, very... Uh, Library-esque? It's, but it, <laughs> it, it's, it's got a, 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 an element of a lot of sophistication to it. Oh, yeah. It's very sophisticated. We're going to be, we're gonna have I, I to be in smoking jackets. I picture you in a smoking jackets. jacket and a pipe, yeah. and, then, and then you going to the various books and then pulling one out and then sitting down and reading to us. My library, um, <laughs> if you walked into my library with a smoking jacket and a pipe, you would not be out of place. Yeah, definitely. That's okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, no. that's what it is. Exactly. And then the chair in the corner. Yeah. And it's story time with John. Yeah. No, it's... And it's, then we're gathered around him looking absolutely up. absolutely gorgeous. As yeah, as... but I mean, there's so many books Let's there, and there's it. so many things we could talk about. I think, and we can set this up, these cameras, I think that's a great idea. All right. We can do that anytime. Yep. So that'll be... Uh, Lila likes the idea. Carla does, too. Okay, so for those on uh, Facebook Live, Biz Talk Radio, depending upon where you live, we have been... Uh, I guess it doesn't matter where you live. We've been kicking around some ideas for live remotes uh, in the new year, and I think we just figured one out there with uh, John's library. We also talked about uh, the nursery, Tiger's Nursery, so... Stay tuned for that next year because we know that you like it when we step out of the studio and give you something different to look at. So if you have any other ideas, too, where you'd like us to uh, broadcast from, let us know. Uh, Tony in Westport, Connecticut mentioned uh, you were talking about all your freesias. She says she can't grow them up there. Oh, I'm sorry. I remember when we lived uh, she can grow tulips. outside of Detroit. Yeah, but <laughs> I would always try to plant ranunculus and freesias. Oh, yeah. Try to put them up next to the house. and Didn't work? Didn't work. And, you know, I think one of the reasons is um, the cold weather's part of it, but it, I thought maybe if they're protected, but the soil's too wet and cold in the winter. 
And those are South African bulbs, so they're used to hot, dry temperatures. But you knew that back then, right? You just wanted to see if it would work? I didn't know it as much back then because I had never gardened in California. We're talking 60 years but, ago. <laughs> how about a remote from Brian's patio? That would be a very cramped remote. Well, Too many plants. we might not be able. It might be Tiger and I might have to do it. We <laughs> might have to wave at you from the window. <laughs> well, if, if you took all the plants out of there, plenty of room. <laughs> but not with everything in there right now. Yeah. Uh, that's All right. I well, so far everybody's. Uh, uh, <laughs> Tony says uh, another good idea might be OCD gardening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm good sure. Luck with that. I'm sure there is people that have this well, have to, what, you know they, they, the OCD works in reverse in the garden for me because there's things I don't do. Yeah. Because. Until I can get it done perfectly, yeah, I'm not going to do it. But that's what I'm saying. It, it's also controlled by money, because if you, like you say, if you, John, if you could afford a gardener that can do the things the way you wanted them done, you know, a good person that can actually, you know, do their job the way you want it done. Because this that's the thing. your garden through your eyes. Yeah, exactly. It's hard because, you know, I might walk into John's garden, and I'm not saying I'm a, a great gardener, but I might do things differently than the way John wants it, and you just got to find somebody You're that... one of the people that I would trust in my garden. <laughs> I wouldn't... But, you know, I had uh, I had some workers come through and, and help me plant roses on mm -hmm. a hill. Half of them are dead. Yeah, and I, you know it, you can't. That but, that's like giving your baby to somebody for an hour and saying take but, care. But so, but that's what I'm saying. If you could find that person, they were valuable to you, and you paid them to take care of your garden, your garden would probably don't be, mistake what I was saying. By the way, I wouldn't pay you to come over. Right? Yeah, but I yeah, would exactly. be happy to but have you. You would come happy over. to have me. <laughs> but um, if you had that money to be able to do that, then you could control your OCD and your tendencies in a garden format. Um. You know, when Brian we were in England, tendencies. when we were in England, do. you know, it was it was amazing what money can do to a landscape. Right. Mm -hmm. When we were in England and we saw it all. We saw both spectrums because we right. saw we saw castles that obviously had the money. Talk about being symmetrical. You've got the English gardens, uh, which are not right. They're mm -hmm. just a collection of perennials and things. But then some of the. The evergreens, you know, clipped into perfect board on the, the estates, lime, especially the lime, right? lime tree rows. Whatever, what did they call them? The the, the lime the trees. The lindens are lime trees, yeah. right? But they called it something specific, where it's like there's just a row of them. Right. The hedgerows. Yeah, and it's just where did that come from? Why do they do that? <laughs> so we saw That's those true. those castles, and some of the castles had a lot of money, and their landscape showed it. And some of the castles didn't have a lot of money, and their landscapes were not as nice. Well, you know, they even had to open uh, Downton Abbey to the public to make money after the war when they ran out. If really? you've watched the series Downton Abbey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. um, I think Lila wants us to go over to her house. All right. She said, how about touring listeners' gardens? Yeah. And just Let's setting go. up there and saying, excuse us, we're putting up cameras. and Yeah. Uh, yeah. Laptop computers, microphones. Yeah, yeah if, you, I, if you want us to, sure, sub, we'll do submit it. an email to John. Send us some pictures. and John at GardenAmerica.com. We'd love to do that. You just need to in, have a strong Wi-Fi. we can call it the Listener's Tour 2023. Ooh, there you go. Different people's Ooh. gardens. Yeah. People really want to see your patio, and Dana says it's a great idea. Take all the plants out. <laughs> <laughs> Dana, she Dana is, and that's, is right on point this morning with the comments. See, now I could get her. I, I get that her saying that, you know, is kind of jokingly. But then she, in another post, said, and never bring them back. <laughs> you, know her, you know her way of saying the same thing? Uh -huh. and, and this is so John, okay? Uh -huh. she, she would say, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we could just – Set up a table and have a cup of coffee on the patio one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> I.e., if there yeah. were no plants and there one, was room out there. One day, one day, if you really upset her, you're gonna come home and there's gonna be no no plants on the patio, and there'll be the TV laying down flat like a table <laughs> with some chairs <laughs> by it. 
Yeah, I've been pretty good, though. That's why I moved some of the plants out under the walkway, <laughs> because it's, it, you know, I'm one of those. If you do say yourself, yeah. I say so I've yourself. Been pretty good. I've been pretty well, good. I mean, pretty I, mean good. I have a hard time good. trimming a plant when it gets really big, because I'm thinking, oh, look how healthy it is, but it's good to trim them. And the same with the plants for a while on the patio. Sure, put it over there. Put it over there. Well, I can't open the screen door now, so maybe I should move some, which I eventually did. But I, your comment was the, the best today. <laughs> I only have the plants that I have now because lately nobody's thrown anything away. Yeah, the but dumpster, dumpster. But plants. it is funny because you keep things perfectly organized and clean. Like we talked about your uh, your uh, mic flags, the the identification when you put it on the microphones here on the studio. And but you know your car perfectly kept clean, clean. Studio perfectly kept clean. But then you have that little bit of chaos. And the patio, I feel, is that one spot that you just let it. Let it go a little bit. Little no, bit. That, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's really a good difference in what Tiger was describing about what you and I think of. Because put my car next to your car. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's full of dirt. Yeah. I mean, if pots. you had to drive my car, you'd probably get a headache, right? <laughs> I'd pull over and have it. <laughs> <laughs> he, would, he would drive it straight to a, yeah. a, a vacuum yeah. and a uh, car wash. But I could get in your car and think it just came off the lot. <laughs> It did. Well, that's why. You know, it's funny because when I return these leases, uh-huh. they say, when Brian's returning his car, you don't need to inspect it. I'm sure it looks clean. I'm sure it's nice. It's yeah. good. Just give him, give him another car. Yeah, I like a clean car. I like a clean house, too. Yeah. I, I like to clean my car <laughs> occasionally, but I, I, I just don't have any motivation to keep it that way. It was getting so dirty that I was going to take it to the car wash because it had been a year since I'd washed it. <laughs> But then we had that rain a couple Perfect. weeks ago. And John said, why yeah. bother? Yeah, now I don't need to. I can save that money. You're and, right, though, Tiger. There's a little bit of that in the patio. Like, eh, let it go a little bit. Yeah. But but during Thanksgiving, during the uh, the heavy winds and blowing the leaves oh, and dirt, man. oh, I was just like going, no. Yeah. Oh, I, I went out there two or three times and cleaned it, and then it was like, you, a, yeah. forget it. Why? Yeah. What am why? I doing it for? Just the wind's going to blow all again. day long. Yeah. But exactly. I felt so good yesterday when I got out there and cleaned it. And when I go home today, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stare at the patio. We have to take a break. We have one more segment. So plenty of time for your questions, your comments, your ideas on Facebook Live. Those on Biz Talk Radio, these messages are from you, from Garden America. We are back. Those on Facebook Live, it's amazing. You didn't even know we took a break. and We're back already. And we always like to know how well your break went. Did you enjoy our break? We hope so. I think Veronica's supporting you today, Brian. She made a comment, dirt's so bad for the paint. True. You know, I have the two rules of driving. They're called the two T's of driving. Oh. The two T's of driving. Never follow trucks on the freeway or anywhere. Never park under a tree. Oh. The two T's. Trucks and trees. Trucks and trees. Uh Don't follow a truck because things fly and fall off. The two... F, T, and P, T <laughs> of driving. And, and don't park under trees because <laughs> things sap, fall on it. Things drip. Where's things my get car park today? <laughs> under a tree. <laughs> right under the tree. Yeah. yeah. Now, some trees are okay, but basically, you don't want things because if you don't pay attention to it, then it gets under your paint. It, it gets into your paint. And like, it's like bird droppings, too. This is what the, the acidity or, or the acid in their droppings yeah. ruin your paint. Well, right. if Veronica's correct and you support her that dirt's bad for the paint, my comment would be, so? <laughs> John could exactly. drive around a car that's just primed, no paint. Yeah, no. Just, just the prime and, and be happy. I, no, I don't know if I yeah, could be. I wouldn't gray, be happy just a, with that. Just really? Yeah, navy gray. That would bother me. Ah, we found something that would bother him. Right. Yeah. But, about his vehicle. Yeah. But a bad paint job w- might not bother me. You don't me. care. Bondo would bother me. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh. All right. We're getting somewhere. Primer Bondo <laughs> bothers I, I'd say the, I mean, obviously I think about where I park, but I think the biggest thing that I look for are birds and um, palm trees with the, uh, the queen palms that have the seeds. Because if it's a tall queen palm, mm-hmm. you then, know, that seed's dropping yeah, twenty five. There's 30 a lot of feet, weight behind that, and, at and that height. That pellet can hit hard. And you're uh, right you get about little the, dings in the car. The birds, like if you park under a light, big old light yeah, pole. Yeah, no, don't do that. And they, and they sit up there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Or a wire, a telephone wires, right. electrical yeah. wires. Don't park under there. Yeah, but so those are probably the two biggest things that I look for in parking um, is the, the, the palms that drop or any – Anything that drops like a heavy ball, mm-hmm. just because I know it's going to dent. And then that does bother me when you look at your hood and you just see the little dent in oh. the right light, you know? Speaking of that, I left work on Wednesday, and I looked at the top of my windshield, and I went, oh, there's a little smear there. Mm-hmm. Better get it off when I get home. And I'm driving, and why is that smear? It's, it's getting a little worse. It's coming down. Was it cracked? It's cracked. Oh. So when I parked, I went out, and there's a crack that you, and to if, every time I drive, it's just getting worse. Yeah. So I've got them coming over on Monday to replace the windshield. Yeah. Probably happened with, like, at first a little little rock. You know, there's always a point of, yeah. of uh, yeah. not entry. But, but a, a, where it hit. Where it hit. Mm-hmm. And, and then uh, it just got bigger Then it gets worse time. from there. Yeah. So does it bother me? You know why it doesn't bother me? Because I know I'm getting it fixed. Oh, there you go. It's already, it's already so been it's taken already, care it's of. Already taken, it's already taken a backseat in the mind. If you hear a rattle in your car... And you don't know what's causing the rattle, it's driving me nuts. I gotta find that rattle. Once I know where it is, I'll get it fixed. At least so, I know the the problem, the cause. So you know it's funny. Okay, um, back to gardening. But what what was bothering you? So I have, and I mentioned this before in the show. I have two queen palms that are planted in my backyard, and they were there when I bought the home, and they've been there for five years. And they're, they're pretty growing, tall, right? They're growing tall. They're growing nicely, but I don't want them. I, that's not what I wanted, but I'm also not taking the effort or energy to what remove them. Queen palms. You oh, inherited okay. them, yeah. and you're not going all out to make sure they get the best care. Right, but they're growing, and they're what they are. And, and they're getting now to the point where I'm like, oh, it's going to be so much work to remove them. And so it's the one thing in my garden that bothers me, but I'm not doing anything about. And I just feel like I asked John before about them. I was like, oh, would you replace them with king palms? Or Kentia, Kentias. Kentia palms, and I can't remember what you told me, but I just, it just, I needed to do something Why about it. Why don't you like them? It's not that I don't like them. I just know what they're going to do. They're eventually going to turn into telephone poles, okay. and and they're dirtier than the other. Yeah, they are dirtier. Yes. They yeah. already are dirtier when they flower and drop. They so drop. How tall in the pool. would you say they are right now? Fifteen feet. Oh, because obviously the taller the bigger, the more money to take them out eventually. More difficult, yeah, all but of only that. Only fifteen feet, take them out. I know I need to <laughs> take it. Fifteen feet, it's nothing. I need to right? just do it, huh? Yeah, because yeah. you're delaying the inevitable. I am. I am. This I made not- a my first experience with uh, queen palms, and you know the the seeds and the flowers making a mess everywhere, right? Yeah. So my idea was, um, as soon as the seeds start to form, go through and cut that thing off before they start uh, ripening and falling all over. Staying ahead of it. And so I kept doing it until the queen palm got so tall that I had to get up on the roof and put a ladder on the roof to reach the seeds. And That seems safe. And I thought, well, this is what wasn't safe, is my son Jesse at the time was probably, he must have been like 14. And I said, I need your help. And he says, what do you want me to do? And I said, I'm going to go cut that that uh, cluster of seeds off, and I want you to hold the trash can oh, underneath. Oh, gosh. So it'll, so like it'll, 40 pounds. 50 so pounds. it'll drop into it. <laughs> <laughs> so he did, and it came down. And I I guess I just wasn't thinking how heavy, heavy and, that thing yeah. was. It went right through the cans. Yeah. Split it in half. Ha! I mean, fortunately, it didn't hit him. Hit him, yeah. Wow. But he was holding it up, and it did take it right out of his hands. Split the can in half, went through the bottom. You know why? Because yeah. he trusts, as, as his father, your fa- he trusted you. I know, and it made me think. I really need to think I had more. <laughs> did you know that uh, queen palm seeds taste like coconut? No. No, I love Oh, really? So what do you mean? Just the, you, the, the seed? Okay. The, the covering of it. The covering. The I mean, orange if you, part. If you bite it. It tastes it's, like coconut? Right, because... Um, They're just small coconut? <laughs> before they became... Well, before they became Aricastrum, the genus was Cocos, Cocos. which okay. is the coconut mm-hmm. genus. Uh, Cocos plumosa, right? Yeah. Now they're Aricastrum roman So if I bite that orange You can seed, eat it. It's edible. Yeah. It tastes like coconut, though. Yeah. We're going to leave you on that note because it is time to say goodbye. Oh. Until next week. Oh, wait, weekend. I got a lot more. I know, we'll save it for next week. All right. We are going to be back next week. 
Thank you for joining us. We hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you for those that uh, participate on Facebook Live. We really appreciate it. And for those that support the show, all of our friends on Biz Talk Radio, Tiger bringing in the arrangements this morning, uh, the Ikebana arrangements, and a big thank you to the author who inspired Tiger. The author's name again, John, because I think you pronounced her name correctly. I think it was Naoko uh, Zima. 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 Yeah. Zima. Zima. Okay. Zima. So until next weekend. There it is, right there. You okay, can have see Have a it. safe weekend. Enjoy your week. We'll do it again next weekend right here on Garden America. Take care.